So uh, welcome everyone, um, this is uh, CDSB's inaugural podcast uh, and this week we will be discussing biodiversity. I'm joined today by Ravi Abevadana, our technical director, um, and we're, we're going to be discussing um, biodiversity and corporate reporting uh, and uh, hopefully by the end of this 10 minute podcast uh, our listeners will gain uh, a better understanding of the issues surrounding biodiversity and what steps they should be taking next as corporates looking to report in this space. Um, Ravi, it'd be great to just uh, give our listeners uh, a bit of background on yourself, your expertise, and then perhaps we can delve into why CDSB feels um, companies are in need of guidance uh, on biodiversity at the moment. Thanks ever so much, Patrick, and hello, everyone. So um, as Patrick had alluded to, I, I'm Ravi Abiwardana, uh, I'm, and I'm the technical director here at CDSB. Uh, my remit is to, uh, to oversee CDSB's technical thought leadership on ESG related financial reporting. I'm a chartered accountant with the Institute of Chartered Accountants in, in England and Wales, a geographer and corporate responsibility and sustainability reporting expert. Um, I've held management positions both in finance and corporate responsibility sustainability departments. Uh, for a leading global agri-commodity company. Prior to that, I trained in practice with a medium-sized enterprise called Echivis and Go Breaks, um, which is based over uh, in London. So um, why is it important for, um, for, for, for companies to have guidance on biodiversity? It's increasingly become, uh, become aware that biodiversity matters do pose a potential risk to investors, and it's becoming uh, ever increasingly uh, evident with regards to the importance of biodiversity um, in the in the wider space as well. You have um, documents um, and uh, literature commissioned by governments on uh, the importance of biodiversity on, um, on modern economic systems such as the Dasgupta review, which looked at very much the uh, overlay between how biodiversity is connected into, uh, into the, the wider financial markets. And, what, and what's, what do current disclosures around biodiversity uh, look like? What's the current lay of the land, um, as it were, in, in terms of where we are now and I suppose where we want to get to? Yeah, of course. Um, it's a really great question there, Patrick. So when it comes to corporates and um, the lay of the land with regards to the disclosure of environmental information, it's it's a bit of a, um, a mixed bag, really. So in our recent study and examination of the top 50 companies within Europe, um, we, we examined... Um, a range of environmental topics which are addressed within uh, within disclosures uh, covering climate change, water, deforestation and forestry degradation, as well as biodiversity. There's been real traction concerning climate change, for example, and 100% of those 50 companies disclosed some form of narrative when it came to um, climate change. There's still some work to do with, with the associated um, TCFD, so the Task Force on Climate Related Financial Disclosure um, of these uh, 50 companies. Uh, and that just shows you, you know, the extent of where we are from a climate change perspective. Once you start exploring how companies are performing when it comes to those other environmental matters, um, such as biodiversity, companies are reporting on it, but not to the extent which we have uh, from a climate change perspective. And this is a real clear indication that support is required around this sort of, sort of work. It's also clearly evident that biodiversity is a very important economic consideration. And the Dasgupta Review, which is an independent global review on the economics of biodiversity, which was led by Professor Sir Parker Dasgupta, um, really looked at that. Uh, and it's very important that companies report 
and disclose the potential financial impacts which biodiversity has on their company. Uh, and so uh, what 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 is CDSB doing to sort of support that? Because we talk about all the work that corporates have, have, have been doing and you reference CDSB's report on the, the, the 50 largest European businesses and, and the sort of progress I suppose we've seen on climate reporting. What is CDSB doing to support um, businesses in reporting on biodiversity and ha- how is it linked to the work that we've already done? So CDSB's vision is ultimately that companies report climate change and environmental information with the same rigour, quality and value as financial information. And as an accountant, that's really important. There are certain attributes which, you know, the accountancy profession are well known for doing. And that's ensuring that the information which they report from a financial perspective is extremely rigorous so that the information can be leveraged and interpreted by investors. And the same information ca- needs to be applied for uh, for that decision use from environmental information too, which needs to go into capital markets and then they can in- be informed of um, decisions going forward. There's been real traction with regards to climate change um, and how that's reported within annual reports. And our framework can be applied to other environmental um, uh, financial risks, such as biodiversity too. Our framework goes beyond climate and addresses other environmental information. We're not doing anything new here. I must stress that. It's really, we're applying our our framework, which has been around um, uh, since 2010, which has also been um, revised over the years, but ultimately providing guidance to the market with regards to how to apply the CDSB framework on other environmental um, uh, uh, elements such as biodiversity. So it's really important to stress um, that the application guidances and the actual CDSB framework is heavily aligned to um, the, 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 the TCFD. Why do I say this? Um, well, um, back in 2017, when TCFD uh, created their recommendations, they use best in practice um, uh, examples. And the best in practice examples at the time was CDSB's principles. You really can't put a, a cigarette paper between CDSB's principles and those of the TCFDs. Um, And this is very important. This is a very important point for me to stress because the actual application guidances, which we are preparing or which we have prepared for climate and which we will be disclosing for water um, later on this summer and which we're currently working on for biodiversity really is a series of TCFD for nature application guidances. So TCFD for nature, what's the what's the roadmap for, for the production of, of the this application guidance? When can we expect to see it coming out? We will have the first draft of the biodiversity application guidance ready in June. And this will go out for public consultation and be tested by a pilot group in Q3 of this year. We hope the final guidance should be launched by October of this year. And I don't think that we could uh, realistically get through a 10 minute conversation on sustainability without mentioning the the sort of recent work uh, that's been done by the standard setters who have been called the alphabet soup by some on uh, the Sustainability Standards Board that's recently been backed by the IFRS. Uh, for those listeners who, who might not know, this is essentially um, the IFRS announcing a backing of a Sustainability Standards Board using the prototype framework that the five standard setters announced in December as a basis for what a global set of standards might look like and obviously that's that's work that's underway and 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 we'll be seeing the fruition of um theoretically over the next 12 months so so to a certain extent Ravi, what you know why 
you know, how does this look um with that in mind what, what why are we doing this all this biodiversity work um when we might be folded into an ssb at some point absolutely um i think it's really important to have just some context since 2017 um the radar really has been on climate since you know since tcfd's recommendations and it's a really important point in the history of disclosures with the introduction of the ifrs sustainability standards board they are focused on climate too but they've also clearly stated that other environmental factors will be considered and what will those other environmental factors be i'm pretty sure um they're going to be they're going to cover biodiversity or water and what what are we doing here we're providing and producing the associated legwork and technical content which i hope will feed into um, that roadmap going forward um, it's increasingly important subject area biodiversity and we're looking to actually support this new sustainability standards board with this associated technical content and finally just to sign off there's a lot of stuff going on um, in the world at the moment um, particularly with regards to new initiatives on climate reporting um, but um, for those companies um, particularly focused on biodiversity what should they do next what's the next step uh, and, and how should they continue to engage with this process so the next step is to ensure that anyone who's interested in this piece of work is connected into CDSB. So reach out um, and we're more than happy to engage you with regards to our thinking and get you involved in our work stream too. Um, and your thoughts will form part of this new guidance which will determine the future of biodiversity related financial disclosures going forward. If you want to find out more about our work on biodiversity, please do visit us at cdsb.net forward slash biodiversity or get in touch with us at info at cdsb.net if you'd like to get involved in this work. You can also stay up to date with everything that CDSB does by signing up to our monthly newsletter at cdsb.net forward slash newsletter. Thanks again for listening and please do let us know in the comments if you have anything else you'd like to add.